Hello, I'm FTX Toy Cat, and Minecraft is now available on every single platform you can imagine. And let's be honest, some of the ones you can't, but if you do decide to play Minecraft on your smart fridge or your toaster, then you're going to quickly realize that it's a different version of Minecraft than you might be expecting. That's because there are two editions of Minecraft. There is the Java edition, played mostly on PC platforms and is very common here on the internet. But then there is also the Bedrock edition, which is designed with low power devices in mind. It was originally made for tablets and phones, and so this is the version which sounds like a match made in heaven when you take the lower power hardware off the Nintendo Switch. However, the reality of the situation is so stark that when people ask me, hey, I was thinking of getting Minecraft on my Switch, do you recommend? I genuinely have to say, please avoid it at all costs, and that is my advice for you today. But why am I giving you such strong advice? I mean, it's just Minecraft, it can work everywhere, right? And it can work everywhere, but the definition of work is definitely stretched when it comes to this edition of Minecraft, and allow me to explain the five key areas that make this not a game I would recommend to people actively. Um, obviously, if you enjoy it, that's great, but I don't imagine that you are enjoying it because first of all is bugs, and this is the one we can forgive the developers the most for because of course, Minecraft is a game which is famous for having so many bugs. Some of those bugs are loved, and some of them are loved so much they become official features like the redstone quasi connectivity or anything else like that. Um, and uh, you know, just this last week, I found a bug that involves squishing a axolotl and it kicking you across the map. Those things are hilarious. We all enjoy these weird, wacky uh, bugs, and so generally we can't fault Minecraft too much for having them. However, Minecraft Bedrock is slightly buggier than Minecraft Java to begin with, and then Minecraft Nintendo Switch not only has all the bugs that Bedrock Edition has, because it's a Bedrock version of Minecraft, but because it's a special build of Bedrock specifically designed for the Switch so it could pass all of Nintendo's various certifications, um, it then has its whole own set of bugs, and if you just look through the bug tracker, you'll find there are a ton of Switch-specific bugs, and a worrying number of just those reported bugs that are specific to the Switch will cause your Switch to full-on crash. This is not a good thing that you want a game to do, I think it goes without saying, and uh, I have heard from many friends who play on the Switch that like, yeah, it just crashes randomly. Is that normal? Is that Bedrock that does that? And Bedrock can crash randomly, but I wouldn't say it crashes anywhere near as much as it does on the Switch. And that's before mentioning the instability of the game in itself. Even when I was just loading up the, you know, a world to do a little test to see how the performance was, um, I had a huge ton of bugs and I just kept running into chunks which wouldn't load in. So yeah, the game is not the most stable Minecraft Bedrock version out there, which is the less stable of the two editions, I would say, in general. And so that's a mark against it, first of all, but it's not enough for me to say don't play the game until we move into the second point here, which is performance. So allow me to show you uh, how Minecraft performs with just a little bit of stress testing, I'll admit. I swear to God, this, this was me just loading into the game for the first time, and you can see uh, the frame rate is going at about 3 FPS on a world I've just loaded up, and apparently I left loaded up so I died. And you can see that like things do actually work fine enough on an empty world with no builds in there. If you just play Minecraft on, again, in brand new worlds, and you don't do too much building, you'll find that, again, the, the, the frame rate is fine enough. You'll find that everything just about works fine enough, besides certain chunk loading issues. And uh, in general, Minecraft Nintendo Switch is a fully functioning game, I would say. However, if you start to build a lot of stuff in your Minecraft world, then you're gonna start to run into lots of issues. I know people who have even just worlds that are a couple hundred megabytes, and those worlds have serious issues running at any decent performance over here on the Switch, and that is a performance which is uh, kind of worrying to say that like, yeah, if you wanna get really hardcore into Minecraft, then the Switch will eventually give you issues, and this is while playing in docked mode, bear in mind. I think the controls are something you can eventually get used to, but something that is very hard to get used to is a drop in performance, but that is before we undock the game, which of course is going to make it even worse, and so it just kind of goes without saying, Nintendo Switch is great for pick up and play Minecraft, but I find, uh, you know, as someone who likes having a long-term survival world and playing for many, many months or years in the same world, it runs into serious issues, even with my very same Let's Play world, but something that makes this even worse is the fact that to get those performance issues, you might expect that like, yeah, but it's pushing the edges of what you can do of a console. No, actually, it's really, really not. This is the render distance that you can get. And that might be true if you've only played the Java edition, which might have a similar render distance to this if you're playing on a low to medium NPC. But bear in mind that render distance on Bedrock is hugely improved. And uh, if we use chunks as our measuring range, which is about 16 blocks, then you'll see that when we go to the settings over here, um, what you know, render distance should we expect? Um, right now we get 14 at the very max. 14 is the highest you can set this as. Um, the default is uh, 10 to 12. And you, can, you if you want to get maximal performance, you're going to have to set it as low as 
five render distance. This is the distance you should expect to see if you want to get a flawless 60 FPS at all times, even when you start to do some of the more complex and interesting stuff. And although I love that Minecraft is one of the few games that lets you toggle your settings to get a continuous frame rate, you should never have to go anywhere near as low as five on a device like the Nintendo Switch, because even though it is lower power compared to its console contemporaries, the truth is this is a version of Minecraft that can run on phones. And if we take a look at those exact same versions that run on phones, so this right here is Minecraft running on an Honor 20, which if you're curious was a mid-end phone released in 2019. So it's a couple of years end uh, old phone that wasn't amazing and cutting edge at the time. It was good, um, but th this is a phone. And so obviously it's designed not primarily with gaming in mind. And yet despite that fact, and despite the fact that we're going through some new caves and cliffs and it's very beautiful, you're going to notice how, oh yeah, what's the render distance here? It looks a lot higher, but it can't actually be right. No, let's go to the settings here, shall we? Let's see what it says. And as you can see, oh, is that 16 chunks of render distance? By default, it's higher than the Switch and it can go up to 24 chunks. I'll admit that it probably starts to run into performance issues here, um, especially when going through the new terrain. Um, but still, it goes about saying that like, oh, this can almost double the Nintendo Switch's power, and it's a two-year-old phone. If you have a iPhone, whatever the current one is, 13, I wanna say, um, if you have uh, a new tablet, then it's going to massively outperform your Nintendo Switch by a factor of two or three, despite the fact that those are devices, you know, intended for, um, you know, phones and internet browsing and, you know, battery preservation at the forefront, whereas the Nintendo Switch is specifically designed with games in mind and can run games like Super Mario Odyssey or, you know, like a Breath of the Wild or, you know, Mario Kart 8 in 1080p 60fps uh, can't do the same with uh, Minecraft unless you're willing to lower the render distance, which to me just feels incredibly strange. It feels like something is very much off there, and it feels very odd to mention that fact by itself, but it is objectively true. Whatever phone you have right now, unless it's a five-year-old thing and it's uh, really beaten up and for some reason uh, cannot play Minecraft physically, it's probably going to run Minecraft better than your Switch. Obviously, the reason you'd play on your Switch is the controls, because there is no such thing as controllers uh, for mobile devices. Um, but the uh, interesting thing here is uh, that I, I want to come back to this later as an alternative. Um, but the worst thing about this is the fact that this render distance is going to be lowering in caves and cliffs. All of these new uh, cliffs and all of these new caves are going to lower the amount of performance every Minecraft device can get. And that's fine, you know, lowering from 24 chunks down to 20 or to 16 uh, might be fine for mobile players to get all these new features. But Minecraft Switch is going to get even worse optimized in the future, it does seem. My third point I want to raise, by the way, is this very optimization. Minecraft Bedrock could be this amazing experience on the Nintendo Switch. However, I do believe, and I actually understand the priorities here, it isn't the biggest of priorities to make sure that's great. Although they could make a version that had great render distance, great performance, etc, etc, etc. The truth is, Minecraft Bedrock is designed for the long haul, and that means that there's going to be a new Nintendo platform out in a few years that they're going to have to redesign the game from scratch for. And so rather than focusing on the Switch as a primary platform, given that this had to only release about a year ago, it just hasn't really been that way. And so they just ignored most of Minecraft Nintendo Switch's great features. Um, for instance, the game can be docked and docking the game will give it more performance. This is wonderful, except Minecraft Bedrock doesn't get better performance from being docked. You don't get a higher render distance in exchange for playing in a docked mode. When you take the game out, it's exactly the same. Something that Nintendo Switch Edition, the version of the game made by 4J Studios, specifically for the Switch, actually did specifically do. In fact, all of the great things about Minecraft Nintendo Switch that are Switch specific, like the fact that you can actually play um, as a Mario or Waluigi skin, officially legit from the game, Okay, once we get through the menus. You know, this is this is optimized, this is great. I mean, for real, being Waluigi in Minecraft, we'll ignore that limited usage sign for now. Honestly, this weighs out most of the other downsides, right? I mean, is, is this not the dream? Is this not what we all want in life? If the answer is no, then you're living life incorrectly. I think that's the only way we can answer that. So yeah, I think that uh, being able to play as Mario characters is great, but that's something Legacy did from before. They made a great deal with Nintendo where they could use Nintendo characters and even indeed Nintendo Worlds as part of a another thing that is specifically available here. Um, but the game is not greatly optimized at all for Nintendo Switch. And uh, it's very hard to do a lot of things that you might 
assume a basic, like for instance, touchscreen controls. No matter how hard you try to touch your screen and make things happen, nothing is going to. The game is just going to say, please use controllers, stop touching me that way, I don't like it. Outside of the, uh, you know, the keyboard, you cannot do anything with the touch controls, which is like fine. I mean, again, 99.9% .9 of the time you don't want touch controls, but it's a shame. It's a wasted opportunity. And uh, there are so many things that fall into this exact same category of like, huh, yeah, that, that feels like a waste, doesn't it? And it's sad because there are so many points in the Nintendo Switch that are a unique console and would have made for an interesting Minecraft experience. They could have used some motion controls somewhere. People have been suggesting that since the Wii, like use motion control Minecraft, but you could have used the crazy vibration in the controllers in a better way than they currently did, which is basically not at all. Um, they could have used the uh, multiple controller support in more interesting ways uh, than they did. And basically the Nintendo Switch uh, is just a gaming platform and a gaming platform that is badly optimized to meet the minimum Nintendo standards um, and not much else, which makes me sad as someone who would love this to be my go-to portable Minecraft console, but it just isn't right now. And uh, one of the reasons is because of the multiplayer. So playing multiplayer, not my big thing. I like playing solo. And if you are only playing solo, you might never notice this is true, but let's say I want to open up my game to have uh, other people come around. Uh, you might notice that Minecraft's uh, one of the few unique features they have on Nintendo Switch is they have two multiplayer game settings. There's a Nintendo account settings and a Microsoft account setting. We'll ignore the strangeness that is the fact that you have to log into an Xbox Live account to play a Nintendo Switch game online. We'll leave that to the side because that is a cool bit of cooperation between Microsoft and Nintendo. But if I would like to play with some strangers, which I can't do because the Microsoft account linking just doesn't work for me on my Switch. I don't know why, but it doesn't. Uh, but uh, if, if I want to play online with my friends, my Nintendo Nintendo Switch friends who I love because I have so many of them. It's like, yeah, what we'll do is we'll um, obviously, uh, first of all, we have to make sure we're using a skin that is allowed. Any Nintendo based skin, so anything from the Super Mario Mashup pack, cannot be used in worlds where other platforms can join you. So it forces you to change your skin or only play with Switch players if you want to use that. No Waluigi in Minecraft unless only Nintendo Switch players see it. But then if you want to enable multiplayer game, do you know what's going to pop up? It's going to tell you, yeah, make sure you pay us first, you idiot. A paid membership Nintendo Switch online is required. I cannot play uh, Minecraft multiplayer on my Nintendo Switch. Um, whereas if I try to play on, let's say, a PC, oh, it's fine. If I try to say, play on, let's say, that exact same phone from before, what does it say? Oh, it just does it, immediately does it. Although, apparently, I'm not connected to Microsoft services and have to log into that first too. Admittedly, uh, again, like, I have to log into an account, which is maybe annoying, but now I can play with all of my friends on all services except the Nintendo Switch. And I'll admit, this is a, uh, this is a fault against all of the console manufacturers. Sony and Microsoft are even worse than Nintendo at this, where you have to pay double as much every year just to play your Minecraft online. But if you have have this exact same game on your, uh, let, let's say you have the same game on a phone, let's say like right now, or you have this same game available on a tablet, or on your PC, or on your smart fridge, you can play online for free. It is a big cost, which is my final point here. Playing Minecraft Nintendo Switch is just more expensive. Uh, I mean, again, this online membership thing, every single year you're giving $20 to Nintendo so you can play your Microsoft game with your Microsoft friends, which is very interesting by itself. But truth be told, everything is more expensive. Minecraft Nintendo Switch costs this amount. Minecraft Pocket Edition, available, uh, it's just called Minecraft in the App Store and the Google Play Store, um, will cost you about $6.99. They regularly do deals where it goes as low as a dollar or a pound. You can get it for an insane price if you're looking, and I think that is something that is worth celebrating, personally. Um, and, uh, you know, therefore, if you would like to play Minecraft on the go, I always just recommend grab it on a phone. If you have as your sole primary console a Nintendo Switch and you play that device at home anyway and you've already bought the Nintendo Switch Online uh, subscription and you already work around the various bugs and crashes and you already, you know, like don't build too much in one area because you know, and, and too many mobs and you know how to deal with the performance, then yes, Minecraft Nintendo Switch is the ideal game to take with you on the go. However, if you have Minecraft elsewhere, maybe you have the Java or the Windows 10 Bedrock version or you just play it on a different console and you're like, yeah, but the Switch is the cool portable one. Play other portable games uh, on the Switch, ones that don't require uh, such a membership. Play these other games and you'll have a better experience. 
My point with this video wasn't meant to be that if you have a Nintendo Switch, then you should stop playing it. Obviously, the title is probably extreme because it's YouTube, and we're trying to really uh, drive a point in here. My point was meant to be that this is not as good as it should be. I love my Nintendo Switch. I love playing games on the Switch, and sometimes I even throw up Minecraft before throwing up because of Minecraft. But, uh, you know, the, the truth is, I just don't recommend playing this if you can buy yourself, which, again, if you have a phone already, it's just the cost of controller. I, I'm not sponsored by this controller, but I love the Razer, uh, whatever it's called, I'll link it down below. But a controller on a phone will give you the exact same portable Minecraft experience, except it's a little bit easier, and it involves a device you already have. Rather than bringing your phone and your Switch around somewhere, just bring the phone is my advice if you use your Switch primarily for party games or for, you know, big story games that you're playing at home anyway, like the Zeldas of the World. Because the truth is, when you actually compare these two things side by side, uh, it's not a big difference in screen real estate even. Like, the, they're very much the same uh, device in so many different ways, except somehow this phone with controllers thrown on the side will perform better and cost you less than this, a dedicated gaming device. Why is that true? I genuinely don't know. I just wanted to raise that point in today's video. To conclude here, I think Minecraft on Nintendo Switch is something we're all happier with than without. However, there are a lot of very key and important questions that come in the form of like, is it good enough? Is it as good as it should be? Is it something I recommend? And the answer is to all of those, no. And I, I'm not making this video just to rail on it and to say it's bad. I'm making this video as a, you know, a buyer's guide. And also in hopes that when Minecraft makes the next Nintendo uh, Minecraft, again, Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Wii Switch, whatever they call the next device, I hope that the version of Minecraft that is on that is just slightly better optimized. Also, I hope they continue to include this Super Mario Mashup Pack as something that you can get for it because I love this as a concept. I, I love everything about this, honestly. I love the music. I love the builds. I love the skins. It is one of the crazy cool things about playing Minecraft on a Nintendo's platform. Look, it's the sun from Ma Super Mario Sunshine. There's just so many cool references all around the place, and I love it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you did all enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, or whatever it is you do with videos that you like um, from creators that you hopefully want to see more things from. Um, I personally am, uh, you know, always going to be the champion of Minecraft. Bedrock should be better, uh, because I think that's important. And if you agree with that, then make sure to subscribe to this channel, where you can see other weird things about uh, the Bedrock version of Minecraft that you might play, whether it be on your Nintendo Switch or elsewhere. Maybe just a phone, PC, tablet, or your smart fridge. You know what? We should, we should try and beat Minecraft on the smart fridge. What do you reckon about that as an idea? Okay, no, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. See you next time. Goodbye.